Hey, hey everyone, how you doing? Hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Yes, welcome. Hopefully you're doing well today, Emil. <laughs> oh, I'm doing very well, yeah. We've had well, a few laughs today and- um, yeah. yeah, it was fun. It was, it was fun, it was very fun, fun yeah. yeah. Uh, cool, so today we're doing a third part of our series of devotion. Yes. And we are speaking about- uh, worship. Worship, yeah. That's something I'm really passionate about, to be honest with you. Me too. So I'm actually excited to do this conversation with you. Yeah, Yeah. likewise. Uh, I think uh, worship connects to a lot of um, everything else we, we've gone through already. Mm, so correct. like the, the Bible and also prayer, yeah. I think it connects to uh, every facet of our life uh, when it comes to devotion. Um, so, but I think the main question is, and the first part we should start from is what is worship? Yeah, that's actually a good question. And I'm, I'm sure people have their own experiences and perspective about worship. But um, to me, it's, it's a place where you come and surrender. You recognize who your maker is mm -hmm. and you recognize the works that he's done in your life, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and I believe this is, um, this is why I'm, I'm so passionate about worship is that I get to come to God and I get to enjoy telling him how glorious, how majestic he is yeah. and how much I would honor him in my life mm. um and i believe that's something that um i i wouldn't just have in my sunday morning session right it's 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 amazing to come together and worship as a church but it's man it's something that i get to do on a daily basis you know mm. get um to to listen to some christian music and meditate on the word of god and glorify God for the things that he's done in my life. That's that's how I enjoy my worship. Uh, but what what's your experience on that? So my experience with worship is um, kind of what you said. It's, it's a response to the revelation of who God is. And um, once you understand who God is and his nature, it's appreciating that nature and mm -hmm. seeing how much you need that nature in your life. Mm -hmm. And when you see how good God is and you truly cherish him and love his goodness and his holiness that the response from that love and that understanding of god is our worship and we see that in our daily life it's not just when we pray or sing or read the bible but it's just in every fact like every point in our life where the way we live the way we act the way we talk to people the way we um react to certain negative things in our life it's it's in every action of our life is is it should be showing um how much we love God and that's worship. So if, if you live your life in a way where it's um, pleasing to God, you are worshiping God. Um, yeah, actually, I'm, <clears throat> I'm actually gonna pull up a verse because um, what you just said, it reminds me of Romans chapter 12. Yeah. And right at the beginning, I believe it's verse two, I'll bring it up right now. And this is what Paul is saying to the, um, to the believers in Rome. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, sorry, I, I read verse two, it's actually verse one. And I, I read verse one. Um, he's speaking about that brethren by the mercies of God mm -hmm. that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to God, yes. which is your reasonable service, or in other translations says, which is your act of worship. Act of worship. So um, we, we often think about, have I worshiped God today or not, mm. in the sense of, have I sung some worship songs or yeah. not? Here we see Paul having that deeper meaning to worship. Amen. And he's saying, it's actually part of your lifestyle. Yes. Right. It's it's the way you live your life and the way you present your body and and the way you walk in the holiness of God. Yeah. It's that's an act of worship. It's it's your service towards the Lord. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's what what you said really reminded me of that passage. Yeah. Amen. And I think uh, we also can see um, when you don't live your life uh, with the way that God intends you to to live it. And you're not living a, a true Christian lifestyle and you're kind of like um, more almost like reaching to the point where it's you're idolizing your yourself and you're you're kind of worshiping yourself in a sense and we I think we there's a perfect example of that in um, 
in Jeremiah 7, um, chapter 7, verses 1 to 4. Um, I'll, I'll bring that up right now. Uh, yeah, it, it's actually while you're bringing it up, mm -hmm. it's actually a good point because um, I sense that a lot of people don't know this, that they think because they're not worshipping God, they're not worshipping anything. And that's actually false. Yeah. Uh, for us, we created to be worshippers. Mm. So if it's not God, it's something, it's something or else. someone else. Yes. So this whole idea that just because I'm not worshipping God, I'm not a religious person or I'm not a worshipper, yeah. it's actually false. If we're not worshipping God, it could be the world, it could be the devil, it could be the flesh, it could be as little as the phone that we hold in our hands, right? Amen. And yeah. um, to me, what, what helps me identify whether I'm worshipping something or not, it's whether I'm putting most of my effort, time, yeah. most of my time, mm -hmm. and most of my strength on. True. And I don't just bring it out of thin air, it's because I match it with the greatest commandment, to love God with all of your heart, mind, strength, and soul. So if you're not loving God with your effort, your time, and your strength, then you're serving someone else with yes. that, right? You're utilizing yourself to worship something else. And you else. can't have two masters because yeah. you'll hate uh, one and love the other. Definitely. Um, definitely. So I'll read Jeremiah 7, 1 to 4. Uh, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all of you Judah who enter, in at these gates to worship the Lord, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Do not trust in these lying words, saying that the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. And so a little background there. Um, the people at that time um, in Judah were worshipping um, Baal, putting incense to Baal. Um, they were pretty much doing horrible, horrendous things in the temple of God. And, and their idea was the temple of the Lord is here. So obviously God's not going to destroy it. We're safe. And God's saying, no, the temple's not going to save you because you've turned into a den of thieves. You've made it something disgusting to me, displeasing to me. I will destroy it and I will send you into exile like I did your ancestors. Don't test me. And I think this is very important because we're called the temple our body is the temple of god we worship god right yeah and if we are like the people of judah at the time displeasing to god and turning it into a den of thieves something something displeasing to god do you think god's gonna spare you do you think god's not gonna destroy the temple just because we go to church once a week and put our hands up and and sing the songs and all these fake pleasantries and just lip service to god saying oh god like we're here we put our hands up we're singing these songs to you but they're empty your words are empty and, and God sees through that and he looks into your heart and he sees you're not, you're not pleasing to me. You've turned this, this beautiful temple into something that's, uh, something that's uh, like disgusting, something that's, uh, yeah. you defiled it. And so God will destroy it. Um, and I think that's what I got from this verse. What do you think? It's, it's actually important because, um, I don't see, um, like many Christians thinking about what they sing, right? Because some of the words on those worship songs, they take total surrender, mm -hmm. right? They take total commitment. And like, you know, you would have, say, a, a quote, Jesus have it all, or I give my life to you. Yeah. And you would think, is that person really doing that? I mean, obviously, you don't stand there and judge people as they're worshiping. Of <laughs> I'm in that, not in that sense. Even you could reflect on yourself on that. Is thinking, do I mean those words? And um, to me, this reminds me of what Leonard Ravenhill said once. I still remember it stuck to my head. He's saying Christians don't tell lies; they go to church and sing yeah. them. Yeah. Because if you're not living out those worship songs, or if you're not living out what comes out of your mouth, mm. then that's by definition is a lie, right? Is, yeah. So instead of us being blessed as we worship God, being in spirit, in the presence of God, we're actually lying before God.
Yeah. So instead of worship being a blessing to us, it's more becoming a judgment on yes. us. Yeah, that's you know, we got to be careful on that. Yeah, and that kind of reminds me of the verse where it's telling us how to worship. And I believe that's in John 4, 23 to 24. Um, I'll bring that up. Uh, oh, yeah. Speaking about worshiping in, in spirit and truth. Yeah, so when, when the... When Jesus comes to the Samaritan woman and tells her, uh, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Oh, amen. Yeah, so it's not by um, how, by our flesh that we worship him. It's by, it's by our, it's from our spirit and, and God sees that and it's, and it's in the way we live, the way we act, and the way we just pour our heart out to God. And uh, I think it's important that, you know, you see the two connections, spirit and truth. Because uh, we know that God is spirit and he is truth. So the way we worship him has to align with who he is. Yeah. It can't be aligned to who we are. Because then we kind of worshipping an idol and it's our worship is pointless. Mm. Or well, sometimes people will be like, oh, I believe God thinks this way or does these kind of things so i'll worship him accordingly mm. and you're basically building a god in your mind that you're worshiping right yes instead of looking at the scripture and thinking okay this is who god is and i can see a lot of example of worship and praise and honor especially like in the book of psalms there's mm. plenty of that things like that could help yeah. us learn how to come before god and yeah. honor him and exalt him amen yeah amen. and um yeah just like in in um you see examples of how we shouldn't worship him mm. like uh when jesus is telling uh i believe it's in uh matthew 15 8 when he says to them yeah. um you, you're pretty much you uh, you're worshiping with just your mouth it's just yeah. words and um like a lip service like a lip service yeah, that's and, and and that, that that worship is pointless it's mm. it's it doesn't have any value to God because it's just tradition. It's just, it's just uh, superficial. Yeah. There's no substance to it. Yeah. And what God wants is substance. He wants mm. something that has true worth because that's what worship is mm. really. It's just seeing something that's worth it to you yeah. and worshiping it. And, th and that, that's what worship is. So if, if, if in, out in sorry. saying that, sorry to cut you off in no saying that, mm -hmm. um, we're seeing often, like in the 21st century, that the church is investing so much on talent, equipments, mm. and whether it's lights, the stages, and so on. Mm. But they're forgetting about the main part, which you're speaking about the heart. Yes. And in thinking about this, like, well, how could someone fix it as an individual? Mm. And how could a church fix it as as a group of believers? Mm. That, that's something people would have to really test their hearts on. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that, that pretty famous song, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Mm. You know, it's having that perspective that we've lost what worship was along the way yes and we want to come back and honor god again yeah we want to make sure that what the mouth is saying is what's in our heart Amen. and it's not two different messages it's not like my heart is saying something else and then my mouth is worshiping god mm. and to god as as you read in matthew 15 it seems like to God, he's more bothered about the voice of the heart than your vocal voice of your mouth. He's, he's not seeking pleasantries. He's mm. seeking he's seeking someone that's faithful, someone that's loyal, someone that truly loves him as was commanded by us. The commandment wasn't say nice words to God, it's to love him. <laughs> um, and I think that's very important. I mean, if you have a friend that just says nice things to you, but then... The way he acts, he clearly doesn't care about you. What good is that friendship? It's dead. It's pointless. It has no merit. It's, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Wow. That that's that's definitely something to always examine someone someone mm. you know themselves. And and I think we should be examining our worship every day in our life because sometimes even an ant 
is worshiping God better than us because it's doing everything that it was designed for. It's going according to what God willed for it. And yet we don't. Sometimes we go against that, but the ant doesn't. Hmm. It protects its queen. It builds its nest. It gets food for its babies. It did what God wanted it to do. Yeah, We don't. Sometimes we don't do that. We, we're worse than them in, in our worship. And it's kind of sad. Um, but especially because we were created for worship. Mm. God literally created us, designed us to worship him. And yeah. we don't do that. It's it's the most basic of reasons why we're created. And we fall short of that sometimes. And it's sad. Yeah. Oh, well, that's what Psalms 156 say. Like 150 verse 6. Mm. Um, there's only 150 <laughs> chapters. Uh, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen. So this whole, what is my purpose in life? As a Christian, I don't need to look any further. Yes. My purpose is to glorify, to serve, to honor my Lord, to worship him. Amen. And also to accept his son. Because Amen. he's the one that died for my sin. And he was resurrected. And that gives me hope that death is not my final destination. That's right. There is life in Jesus. And that's that's what we have. I think if there is any reason for any human being to worship God, there's no better reason than that. Yeah. It's to say, God, is this what you've done for me? You've actually sent your son. He died on the cross for me. He took <coughs> away my sin. Mm. And even though I was guilty, instead of you choosing to judge me, you Save gave me, me mercy. Yeah. Right? That's that's amazing. Like the more you meditate on things like that, the more you think, man, God, God is not just worthy of worship. <laughs> There's no limit to worshiping God. Amen. But in also saying that, I think um we we do tend it is in our nature. We do tend to, um, I guess, emotionally worship God. And I'm not talking about um, some people find certain worship emotional, some people not. I'm, I'm talking about in the sense of if life is going well for me and I'm feeling these quote unquote good vibes and yeah. happy and so on. It's easy for me to worship, you know, but if life is a struggle, um, I think it gives a struggle for me to worship. Like I'm, I'm like, I don't feel like worshiping God. Mm. So by saying I don't feel, it just shows that my emotions are dictating whether I will worship God today or not. True. And, um, one, one of my favorite, uh, Christian songs, it, I think it's called praise the Lord it says praise the Lord. Like when, when the world, you know, when things are going good, when you're on the mountain, but also praise God when things are going bad and Amen. when you're in the valley and, and it says the reason why, because Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. So whether you feel like you're in a valley, Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord. Jesus Christ is in control. Whether you're on mountaintop, and life is going great for you guess what jesus, christ, jesus is christ is lord he is always in control amen so i think that's something important and if i look at the bible i mm -hmm. find the apostles you know um when they are imprisoned you mm -hmm. see them worshiping and praising god like paul yeah and, and you would think what reason does that person have to worship god mm -hmm. And the answer is, well, it's not about a reason. It's not about emotions. It's about me worshiping God because he is worthy and he is Lord. He is God. Yeah. That in itself is already, yeah. you know, a justification of his worship. Uh, you, you don't need to say any more than that. He is God. He's our creator. And he, what else is there? He created us. Worship him. Simple as that. Yeah. And. And not only on that, but then he also gave us grace, uh, the gift of salvation, mm. which we didn't deserve. So what? That's even more. That's like it's it's even though he was already deserving of praise, even if he had condemned us to death, we he still deserved our praise and our worship. 
Yeah, and yet he he, he was being just. He was being oh, just. Being yeah, just. They, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we were deserving of it. Mm. And then on top of that, he also gives mercy. I mean, how much more is that? And I think as as and that's why I, th- I go back to that truth. It's it's spirit and truth. It's you understand the truth, the revelation of who God is and what He has done for you, and then you choose to accept it because you love what He is. Mm. You love that He is good because some people see the truth and they say, "I hate it because I love sin." So obviously they're not going to worship God. But when you see it and you appreciate it and you cherish Him, He becomes a treasure in your life, in your heart, and you always go back to Jesus Christ whenever you you're in the valley. You're feeling down. Everything is going wrong. Your hope is not in these things or even them being... Sometimes, unfortunately, you're going to stay in that valley to the moment you draw your last breath. But it's not about that. My hope is not in this life. My hope is in what comes next in the kingdom of God. And I know that's eternal. This life is like a blink of an eye. So my hope is in that. So I'm always going to be grateful because that's not going to go away. That's never going to go away. No one can take that from you. Yeah. No one. No, what can separate us? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and since you're talking about like eternity, mm. it's worship is one of those things that you will practice for eternity. Amen. You know, there are things uh, in the in our Christian life where they are for this life, right? They're mm. made for this life. We We get to do them here, but we're not going to be doing them in heaven worship is something that is going to continue and it's going to be an amazing moment when you get to see these angels you get to see that people from every tribe every language from all corners of the world Mm. coming together and glorifying god and you being part of it yeah i just don't know how people be like you know what I want to miss out on that. Yeah. I'd rather just it's, worship something else. It's crazy. And um, in saying that, um, I want to actually, I want to share with you a verse. Please. Because um, since we're talking about worship, you often speak about idols, right? Mm-hmm. Because we speak about idol worship. Mm-hmm. And, and I often share this with Christians because a lot of Christians don't notice this. Do not notice this. You know, like I would have a Christian when I would talk to them and be like, you know, I visited that person's house. They had an idol. I felt so uncomfortable. I'm like, cool. I want to share with you a verse. All right. And and this is Ezekiel 14, um, verse 1 to 5. Now, some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts. Mm. That's that's the catch there. And put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. Should I let myself be inquired at all uh, by them? Therefore speak to them and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Everyone of the house of Israel who sets up his idols in his heart, and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity, and then comes to the prophet. I, the Lord, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols, that I may seize the house of Israel by their heart, Mm -hmm. because they they are all estranged from me by their idols. And I mentioned that, I'm like, if that makes you comfortable, what about the idols of the heart? Yeah. Because these idols are more deceptive than your common idol that you would see on a shelf, right? Mm-hmm. Or say in a temple, right? If, mm-hmm. if you're going to go past a temple, you might see a lot of idols there. And sometimes we have this spirit where we're going to criticize that. Like, oh, how could you worship an idol, right? You're in the 21st century. How could you do that? But then God also shares that we can also have an idol in our hearts, If God is not number one in our heart, then whatever is taking that place is our idol. And God is actually rebuking his own people. Notice here, this is the Israelites. So even Christians, we think that we're immune of having idols in our hearts. And that's, that's not true. We as a temple of God, 
we get to either have a decision to say, God, I want to surrender everything to you and you are the only God in my life. Yeah. Or I'll be like, you know what, God, I'll give you this nice temple, but I'm going to leave this little room for my little for my idol. idol, right? Please, God, you can have the rest of my life, but don't touch that area. And that's something that requires us to say, I do need to surrender. Yeah. I need to give it all. It's hard, right? The certain sins, as, as we read now, that these idols make you stumble in iniquity, right? Yeah. So it makes you go back to your sins. But if we let go of the sins, then these idols have no hold on us. And therefore they have no place in our hearts. Mm. That, that's, that's, what, that's my thought with this. Yeah, I, I think you touched on a very important point there. It's um, I think before it was uh, it was there was less temptation to have many idols in the, in the life at that time. Uh, of course, they still did, but um, now it's there's so much stuff to distract us from God. True, it's so true. much distractions, and it's and 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 it's sneaky. The devil, the devil's had many years to. Um, exactly 2000 years to uh improve his uh <laughs> his tactics he's getting better at it he's getting better <laughs> at it and he's putting in less effort less and less effort and uh we're making it easy for him um the problem is i think the church sometimes as a whole kind of is more passive towards these things to these idols they're less against it compared to before um they're more lax with the way they see idol worship uh and i think we've become lax too and we've been kind of relaxed a bit mm. in uh in our worship of god and our daily devotional life uh would would you say that it's just obviously not taking your faith seriously would would, would that be would you say that's the reason it's not just just that unfortunately i think it goes deeper than that i, th I think it's just taking your whole purpose your whole purpose is as why am i on earth not seriously it's almost like you see this as an afterthought your your everything the, the spiritual aspect of your life is an afterthought and the only thing that matters is the physical oh, I, yeah. I think i think i see that and and because i'm not speaking on of you know outside influence i'm talking about my own personal life as well i've i've, I've been there mm. i've been there. it's when god has become an afterthought and my own personal life has been at the forefront of my life and you see that in the way i lived at that time you see that in in my fruits you could see that in everything you could it's unfortunate but um i think a lot of christians are going through that and i see that in their life by their by their fruits you can see it uh, they're not living for christ they're living for themselves and eventually they put up an idol of themselves and they worship it yeah so it's basically like prioritizing and saying god there's like a fifth spot it's empty at the moment we'll slot you in and then yeah. bit by bit it just goes down the ladder so, so it's and then yeah. you start to look at your life and you're like hold on where, where is god in my life yeah. it's kind of the opposite of what you said we're having a room where god's there in a little corner for the idol no it's the other way around unfortunately <laughs> um it's like a little room for guys like god you could take control of my life like but this statue, is the room huge yeah. statue of yourself and a little statue of, of yeah. uh or just a bible there you know a little tiny bible in the corner somewhere yeah if, if there's space yeah true true well we just want to encourage you to examine your heart and um, think of your worship life, the, the, the life that you, you're walking with God on a daily basis. And as you've noticed that we're not talking about worship as in Sunday morning worship, right? Mm. That's what you do when you sing together as a church. But you also notice that in Romans 12, 1, it speaks about our lifestyle our own bodies the way we live in holiness and that is an act of worship before Amen. god so i believe that if you're gonna look at your life today for example instead of you thinking have i worshiped god in the sense of have i sang some worship songs how about how you lived your life mm. and then you were like okay great 
I've done a great service. I've, I've actually lived the life of worship today and I wanna do that on a daily basis. So we just wanna encourage you to not think of this life as um, God is my Sunday, Sunday buddy, right? Where I get to meet him on Sunday, I get to mm -hmm. see how he's doing and I will say nice words to him. Um, but actually say that God is in control of my life and I want to give everything in my life. And I'm not saying those words, but the heart is also saying those words. Otherwise, we're fa we fall into the same hypocrisy, yeah. right? They worship me with, it, with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. So I would encourage you, does what your lips and your heart, do they say the same thing? Do they have the same message? Yeah. Do they have the same feelings? So we want to encourage you with that. And Emil, thanks, dude. Thank you. We, we got one more. We got fasting coming soon. We do, yes. Yeah. So God bless you. And um, I, I hope that you get to enjoy your day today. Take care. Take care.